Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam Al-Azari's The 99 Beautiful Names of God. Al-Maqsad Al-Asna fi Sharhi Asma'illah Al-Husna. Translated by David Burel and Nazir Dahir. We are still on chapter 4. Uh, that's still part 1 of this book. Second part will be explaining the names, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, this uh, chapter is uh, about the perfection of and happiness of man, which consists in conforming to the perfections of God Most High, and in adorning himself with the meanings of his attributes, and meaning the human being would uh, adorn himself with the meanings of Allah's attributes and names, in so far as this is conceivable for man. And in, the, in this chapter, the first uh, way, path, uh, uh, briefly, the first uh, share is a knowledge of these meanings by way of witnessing and unveiling, so that their, their essential realities are clarified for them by a proof which does not permit any error. Briefly again, number two, the second, second way of sharing in these meanings belongs to those who so highly esteem what is disclosed to them of the attributes of majesty that their high regard releases a longing to possess this attribute in every way possible to them so that they may grow closer to the truth in quality, not in place. And with the possession of such characteristics, they become similar to the angels. That's basically bringing them closer, nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And briefly, the third uh, share follows upon the effort to acquire whatever is possible of those attributes, to imitate them and be adorned with their good qualities, uh, to be Rabbani. And uh, in this part, Imam Ghazal discusses or responds or refutes to the uh, hypothetical question whether this is uh, uh, like unacceptable uh, Islamically because uh, nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Imam Ghazal explained this is not really about becoming equivalent or uh, now we continue uh, we are mm, almost the beginning of second uh, Paragraph on page 35. The specifying mark of divinity is that God is an existent necessarily existing in himself. The necessarily existent. Such that everything whose existence is possible exists from him. If it does exist according to the best ways of order and perfection. والخاصيه الالهيه انه الموج الموجود الواجب الوجود بذاته التي عنها يوجد كل ما في الامكان وجوده على احسن وجوه النظام والكمال فهذه الخاصيه تصور فيها المشارك البته it's not open for a uh, human uh, participation it is inconceivable that this specifying mark be shared in at all or that anything attain a likeness to it if man's being merciful, patient, or grateful does not require the existence of a likeness, neither will his hearing, seeing, knowing, power, living, or acting. Rather, I hold that the specifying mark of divinity belongs to none but God, the Most High, and to be held holy. And no one knows it but God. Nor is it conceivable that anyone know it except him or one like him. And since there is no likeness of him, he or his nature is not known by other by other than him. Okay. I think I, uh, it, the, this line should convey to... No one is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think the, uh, the uh, oh, 
بل أقول خاصية الإلهية وليس إلا الله تعالى ليعرف إلا الله تعالى ولتصور يعني فإلا هو أو من هو مثله وإذا لم يكن له مثل فلا يعرف غيره The second part I'm trying to get in, in, in the English Okay Rather I hold that the specifying mark of divinity belongs to none but God Okay And no one knows it but, but God nor is it conceivable that anyone know it except him or one like him and since there is no likeness of him okay he or his nature is not known by other than him okay that's not that's fine so aljunaid May God's mercy be upon him. Was right when he remarked, Only God knows God. For that reason, he only gave his noblest creature, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a name which veiled himself as he said, Praise the name of thy Lord Most High. So by God, no one other than God knows God in this world or the next. The Nun was asked, Junaid and the Nun, we talk about two uh, famous uh, Sufi spiritual personalities in the history of Islam. He was asked when he was on the brink of death, what do you long for? And he said, that I might see him, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before I die, be it only for an instant. Now this confuses the hearts of, the, of most of the weak and induces them to accept the teaching of negation and denial of all attributes of, to God. And this may be attributed to their inability to understand this discussion. For I say, and of course this was no way, just think about the known and think about the, the, the request of Sayyidina uh, Musa alayhi salam. When he asked to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared to him, you will not see me. But look to the mountain and uh, If the mountain will um, hold itself in place, then he will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, it would not be the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself to the mountain and the mountain withered away. For I say, if one were to say, I know only God, he would be right. And if he said, I do not know God, he would be correct. Yet we know that negation and affirmation cannot be true at once. But that truth must be distinguished from falsity. So that if a negation be true, the affirmation is false and vice versa. But in different respects, it is conceivable that things said on both sides be true. This would be the case where one person to say to another, Do you know the faithful one, Abu Bakr, Siddiq? May God be pleased with him. And he were to say, Is the faithful one, a Siddiq, unheard of or not known, given the fame, visibility, and renown of his name? Is it conceivable that anyone in the world not know him? Is there anything but his name on the pulpits? Is there anything other than his mention in the mosques? Is there anything other than his praise and description on people's tongues? So the one who says this would be right. And... Uh, 
these words of uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq deserves to be uh, praised. This is uh, not in front of his face, uh, of the line. Uh, and here we are, we're repeating 900 years later uh, what Imam Ghazali said. Uh, 400 years later, 500 years later, after the death of Bakr Sadiq uh, As if there is also a message by the choice of the um, character of Bakr Sadiq Knowing that, of course, he's, he was the first uh, caliph and all the uh, discussion about who should have been the caliph after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu So all this praise might also, might also entail a message uh, in the face of uh, the uh, like countering the narrative that tries to uh, belittle Abu Bakr al-Siddiq So the one who says this would be right, but if another were to uh, were asked, do you know him? And he said, who am I to know the Asadiq, the faithful one? Far from it. Only one who is faithful knows the faithful one, or someone who is like him or above him. Who am I to claim to know him, or even hope for that? People like me hear, the, hear his name and his attributes, but as for claiming to know him, that would be impossible. This statement would be would also be right. Indeed, it comes closer to the glorification and esteem due to Abu Bakr Siddiq Ratlan. This is the way in which one should understand the one who says, I know God, and the one who says, I do not know God. If you were to show a piece of intelligible writing to a reasonable person and say to him, do you know its writer? And he said, no, he would be speaking truly. But if he said, yes, it, its writer is a man living with powerful hearing and seeing sound of hand and knowledge in the practice of writing. If I know all this from this sample, how can I not know him? He too would be speaking truly. Yet the saying of the one who said, I do not know him, is more correct and true. For reality, he has not known him. Rather, he only knows that intelligible writing requires a living writer knowing powerful hearing and seeing. Maybe some of these might not be even necessary. Can we have a writer who is uh, not seeing? Yes. I mean, we have uh, poets and uh, literati who uh, were uh, blind. And in, uh, in the Arab world, uh, I mean, I knew, I knew personally... Uh, a couple of blind uh, professors, one of Islamic studies and one of uh, of Arabic, and uh, and why the um, Arabs who are blind turn to Arabic? I think the impact of uh, Taha Hussein, because he was uh, he was blind and he became uh, very famous. Uh, uh, writer and, uh, and professor of, of Arabic. I tried even to, uh, I mean, I did recommend uh, a third professor of, uh, of Arabic to an Islamic university in the Muslim world. Uh, and the answer came from the rector at the time that uh, whom I knew personally uh, 
he uh, said that this is not a, a university for the handicapped and it's very offensive uh, It was not a public statement, but still, it's offensive. All that they needed to do is simply assign someone to assist him. Uh, and we, he might not even have, he might, we might not even need that, but just simply. A university could uh, handle that much, I would say. Back to the... Uh, The definition of uh, or what we could know about the uh, writer if he does not know the writer himself similarly every creature knows only that this ordered and precisely disposed world requires an arranging living knowing and powerful maker not for the atheists uh, uh there is a, a video a video clip about a scientist who insists on uh, a mechanistic materialist uh, worldview where matter is uh, unconscious and that's about it there's nothing except the material uh, like this is science and this is really the scientific perspective and there's nothing more than that and this reminds me of the uh, uh, the vienna circle uh, that uh, the positivist um, uh, school logical positivism it was very reductionist and by insisting, I mean, I wish I wish they could follow all the way, all all the way uh, to um, with this argument about only material uh, material things could exist and there's no consciousness. Uh, for this dead matter in a sterile universe, just think about the temperature of our sun of all these. Uh, stars of the immense uh, uh, immense uh, heat uh, inside in the universe we talk about in less than a second after the uh, the explosion the big bang um nothing existed then except material soup as they say no protons no neutrons no electrons no and how did life come into existence if there is no consciousness and this dead matter could it basically i mean how could it develop anything including one simple cell there is a society which is uh, a Western society um, with membership uh, of such uh, scientists who, at, who um, have been attempting to create one living cell for the last 70, 75 years. And uh, usually I say this is as old as the Palestinian issue, uh, except that there will be uh, uh, fruit for the uh, Palestinians, but not for those scientists. They will not be successful in creating life. And who is more intelligent? They or the dead matter? They are more intelligent. And still they cannot really come up with anything. Okay. So... Similarly, every creature knows only that this order and precisely disposed world requires an arranging, living, knowing, and powerful maker. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. 
this knowledge has two dimensions and I think this is really the role of uh, the primary role right now in there are many uh, details but the primary role is to reintroduce um, a worldview a monotheistic a true monotheistic worldview uh, that faces the onslaught of atheism uh, militaristic uh, atheism uh, which is not a even-handed when it deals with religions uh, Islam does get the lion's share of their uh, attacks this knowledge has two dimensions one of them concerns the world and has for its object the need that someone directed while the other pertains to God great and glorious and has for its object named names derived from attributes which do not enter into the reality of the essence and its quiddity we have already explained that when one points to something and says what is it to mention names de derived from it is no answer at all for if he pointed to an, indiv an individual animal and said what is it and the response was tall or white or short or if he pointed to water and said what is it and the response was it is cold or to fire uh, asking what is it and the response was hot none of that would answer concerning liquidity at all knowing something is to know its essential reality and its quiddity not the names derived from it we might we might say the the function for our saying hot means something or other the or other with the attribute of heat similarly our saying powerful or knowing means something or other with the attribute of power or knowledge if you say our saying that he is the necessary existent from whom alone exists every single thing whose existence is possible is equivalent to his essential reality and his definition and we already know that I would say not at all for our saying necessary existence is equivalent to his having no need for any cause or an agent and this proceeds from the negation of any cause in this regard I think one of the like, there are attributes that speak directly to this uh, like uh, as samad he is beseeched for uh, for help we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to for all for all th kinds of things we are in a state of need people do not people under, people don't understand uh, really when we say uh, the quranic uh, that people uh, are in a state of poverty cons uh, in their relationship to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fuqara illallah uh, people might think about poverty as no lack of money but really fuqara here they being in a state of need that's all creatures you need to breathe, you need to drink, you need to eat, you need to... Uh, our needs reflect our uh, state of uh, constant need. Every creature is in uh, such a state. And our saying, every existing thing exists for him, proceeds from actions being related to him so if we if we are asked 
what is this thing? And we answer, he is an agent. That would not be an answer. For if we said, he is the one who has a cause, that would not be an answer either. So how must it be with our statement? He is the one who has no cause. For all such discourse discloses what is not his essence or what relates to his essence either by negation or affirmation and so entirely comprises names, attributes or relations. Inshallah, we will uh, continue um, tomorrow with uh, reading of Maqsud Asna. Until then, Subhanakallah, Alhamdulillah, Ashadu Allah, and Astaghfirullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.